Spending less is about saving our money, not spending $630 billion. Fun fact, fun fact, $1.16 billion is spent on Christmas trees every year. What do we do with Christmas trees at the end of season? Most of the time, right? Or if there's a light out, maybe we leave it out for the trash guy. Or we go burn it in the desert if we're a youth pastor, but that's besides the point, right? Um, but that week on Spend Less, we landed on three practical steps that we could do to spend less. The first one was to buy one less gift, okay? Maybe it's that random friend at school that you're like, dude, I think I should buy you something, but I don't really know, and I'm just going to say spend less, and I'm going to save that money so I can give more. The second one was buy a simpler gift. You don't have to go all out. You can buy a simple gift. It's cool. And the third one was to buy a gift of meaning and purpose. The third week, we talked about give more. And I thought this was awesome because it was at our, our youth group Christmas parties. And we talked about giving more. This was great. We talked about how the wise men didn't go on this epic road trip just to sing happy birthday to Jesus and give presents to each other. Right? Right? They went on this life-changing journey that they had to pack for, that they had to prepare for, that they had to think ahead for to go and give gifts to Jesus. So how can we give gifts to Jesus this Christmas? How can we give gifts of meaning and purpose? Because that's what the wise men gave. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh wasn't a random fact. They gave it on purpose. So we dug into that a little bit. And we landed talking about some different organizations that we can give to as a youth group to be able to give more. If we spend less money here, let's take that money and give more to organizations all over the world. It's said, experts say that 10, it would take $10 billion each year to give the 1 billion people in the world who don't have clean drinking water, clean drinking water. Less than 2% of what we spend in two months. So we talked about a group called Living Water International, who you can give the gift of clean water in Jesus' name. And this is all stuff that our youth group has been doing and hearing. I've been hearing awesome stories. I heard another awesome story today about a student sitting at Starbucks, and she ended up buying like seven girls drinks just to show love to them. I mean, it's really cool stuff. Love all is what we get to land on tonight. And I think this one is the most important tenet here because it really is what Christmas is about. Right? I think we get to truly see God's picture of love to us. And if we're going to have Christmas change the world again this year, I think we need to love like God would love. Right? So how, how do we do that? Well, one of my favorite verses, one of the most famous verses out there, Milo talked about it earlier, John 3.16 talks a little bit about love. But it's all over the place, right? And you hear outside the church, you hear, I love food. I love video games. I love going to the mall. I love baseball. I love angels baseball. I love steak. I love my wife. Guys, don't use those two in the same sentence. It doesn't work out that well. Unless you're bringing, no, just don't. The Bible says a lot about love. John 3.16 shows up at football games on people's eyebrows, right? Can show up on mugs, can show up on a whole bunch of different things. And we're so good at reciting it, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, right? That's awesome. And, and, you know, and this for me is just a huge verse because it is a snapshot of God's love. But I think a lot of times when we read it, we just read through it, right? Check off a box. I read, I read my chapter today. And today we're going to dig into this a little bit, right? I, somebody once said, right, they, they said, for God so loved North America that he gave his one and only son, that whatever American believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
No, that's not what it's not. I know you guys don't know that, right? God says love all. For God loved the world, not just America, not just North America, the entire world. He loved us so much that he gave us Christmas, that he gave us his one and only son. Okay, so we kind of get the idea about love, about all, or about all. How about this love thing? How do we grasp the idea of love all? I think we have to look at the one who came 2,000 years ago. I think we have to look at what God's gift was to us. And so we're going to unpack this. There's so many stories in the Bible about Jesus loving all, but we are going to look in Matthew chapter 8. And this is just an awesome story, so I'm just going to dig in. This is right after the Sermon on the Mount. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, can you heal me and make me clean? Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. I know that's not necessarily a a Christmas story, but I think that's an extraordinary story of God's love. Pastor Tim talked about it a few weeks ago, uh, about this thing. We read this, and I think that we can read through this again, and we get comfortable with our Bible reading, right? And we read through this, and, and we, we just plow through it, and we're like, all right, sweet, I got this. But if you really look down, if you really look at this, we see how big this was. Jesus reached out and touched a man with leprosy. This was a big no-no back in the day. Okay? People, lepers, not leopards, lepers, okay, would live in a colony outside of the city. They probably smelled a little bit. They had open sores all over their bodies. People would run away from these guys. Okay, they might enter a marketplace. Everybody would run. You know, you see cartoons that everything shuts down like, like that. That's my picture of this, right? A, le- a person with leprosy walks in and everybody shuts down. They would leave bread on the table so they could get the bread and leave the money, but no one would be there. People would run away. And I think that's why it said, suddenly a man approached. Right? I could see this guy hiding behind a tree. All right, I see him. He's coming. He didn't want to be around people. He knew people would run, and it's, he saw his chance, and he went for it, and he jumped out. And suddenly, he got to have an encounter with the living God. Jesus risked his life to touch this man. Right? This, skin, this was a disease that was transferred by touch. Okay, The, the principle that I want us to see here is Jesus loved all by touching a man who smelled and who was an outcast and who was different. He stepped into this man's life to change his life forever. There's so many other stories in the Bible about this, right? Jesus would step and show love to so many different individuals. There was a woman who has who has been bleeding for 12 years, essentially the same thing. These guys had not been to church in a very long time. They were considered unclean, and she touched Jesus, and Jesus said, where did the power go? Right? He had this interaction with this lady. He entered this lady's life. There's the one where Jesus, this, I love this one, where Jesus spit in the guy's eye, and then he rubbed it in even more. <laughs> he said, can you see? No, not yet. It's kind of some, some things. Rubbed it in even more. Jesus loved all by touching people's life. I hope you're starting to see the picture. Jesus loves people through closeness and proximity. Jesus loves people by jumping into their story. Jesus loves people by getting up in their grill. He showed love to somebody who had this horrible skin disease and took a risk, I think, to show us what the Father meant when he said, love all the world. 
I was faced with a choice a couple months ago, and I, I don't want to be a, a pastor who is afraid to admit their mistakes. I make quite a lot of them, okay? If you think pastors are perfect, I'm sorry. I just burst your bubble, okay? And you're going to hear why in a sec. I, I, I want to be a pastor that's honest, and, and I, I think you learn from your failures. A Com- couple months ago, I was in Sacramento with my family. We were having a good time. We went to the train museum. I took my boys to the train museum, and it's this awesome place. And there was a time... Um, we finished the train museum, we're walking around, and we got hungry, and so there's a place that had fresh donuts, and I was like, oh, I love donuts, I'm going to get these donuts, and so we're sitting down at this table eating these fresh donuts, and my cousin stands up and says, okay, it's time to go. I said, okay, what's going on? I turn around, and there's a man walking towards us. He's a homeless man. He starts looking for the trash can, and there was a trash can right here, and my wife and two kids were sitting right here, and I said, okay, let's go. And we walked away. And I did nothing. And as I turned around, the picture in my head is I thought he'd be in there getting bottles and cans and stuff. And he was in there finding scraps of food. And I did nothing. I went home. Went to bed, or what I thought was going to be a good night's sleep. And two o'clock in the morning, wide awake. And God has been working on me ever since. Man, I wish I could tell you I, I went back and was like, oh, yes, God, and got the guy a burger or the next guy I saw on the street that I would help them out. But God's been working on me. I could have entered that man's life and shook his hand. But I believe God's using that as an example to help teach me how to love all. Jesus loved the world through physical touch and closeness and proximity. Parents of young kids get this, right? When your kids get sick, you don't want to leave them, leave them in the room. Maybe you do, but you don't, right? You, you go and you get them and you hold them close, right? Two weeks into my time here in in Clovis, my son, my oldest son, Tyrone, had a major allergic reaction. I mean, things all over, and we went to the hospital all night, and I held my son for like six, seven hours that night. And he's like, I don't want to leave daddy's lap. I don't want to leave daddy's lap, right? I didn't love my son through, okay, walk the off, you got it. That wasn't it, right? I, I held on to my son, and I think that is an awesome picture of how Jesus calls us to love We have to realize if we want to love all this Christmas, we have to be able to get close to people. I don't care if it's the homeless man on the corner who you think makes more money than you do, or maybe the neighbor who doesn't mow their lawn at all and bring down the property value. Or maybe it's a friend that you're fighting with, or maybe it's a parent that you're fighting with. Or it's a family member that you're having trouble getting along with. Or if it's a homeless guy that's so hungry he's looking for food in a trash can. Jesus calls us to love all this Christmas. Okay, as we start to land the plan, I know it's getting late. How do we do that? What does that look like? How do we physically get out and go touch people this Christmas? Because people need touches. They need touches all over Clovis and Fresno. Well, there's a couple big organizations. There's the Ronald McDonald House. They help families out and need a ton. Children's Valley Medical Center. And as a church, we're, we team up with Fresno Rescue Mission um, to help the unloved. There's people all over the world that need a touch from Jesus. They need to feel loved by you and by Jesus. These are the people who we need to bring to restoration. And who need Jesus this Christmas. Jesus entered people's stories with his presence, not his presence. And that's my challenge to us this Christmas. My challenge is for you tonight, this Christmas, is to make Christmas mean something again. Turn it upside down. I believe that we can change the world by worshiping fully Spending less, giving more, and loving all. And if we are spending less, we're going to be able to give more to people in need, and we're going to be able to love all. 
Maybe God's calling and pulling on your heart tonight, and you're saying, oh man, I bought way too much stuff. I added to that uh, $630 billion. Well, if God's calling you out on it, still time to take it back. I don't suggest doing it tomorrow. Just FYI, just, just saying. Tonight we're going to give an offering. The ushers are going to come forward, and as, as the ushers come forward, the worship team is going to come on up. Tonight we're going to um, have an offering, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to physically go out and touch somebody's life. We're donating not to the church, to Fresno Rescue Mission, to a, a thing that's called Rescue the Children. The Rescue the Children is a protected, secure environment providing emergency and long-term at-risk services to abused and homeless or previously incarcerated uh, women or women with children. They used to just do women and they added the children bit and they're working hard on keeping women and children together, but they need help. And there's a whole list if you go on, if you go on uh, their webpage. But today we are going to give from what we spent less. I know some of the teenagers have been spending less this Christmas and they're going to give and this is their opportunity to give. If God's calling on your heart, I, I don't want to coerce you in anything. I want this to be a God thing, a you and God thing. I believe God has called us to conspire together to turn Christmas upside down and to let everybody know that Christmas still matters. Amen. Let's pray. God, I love you and I praise you. I, I, I worship you tonight. God, and I thank you for Christmas. I thank you for your son. God, this Christmas, I ask that you continue to work on our hearts. God, this Christmas, you continue to move in our lives. And as we go into this new year, God, may we seek you with a passion that we would have never thought. God, as we give this offering to Fresno Rescue Mission, Rescue the Children, God, I pray and as they give services and homes to people in Jesus' name, God, I pray that lives be changed forever. God, I love you and I praise you. In your name, amen. Here's my prayer. My prayer for us as a church family is this. The idea from worship fully to love all was not just for a Christmas event, but that it begins to be the thought process for how we make decisions for the coming year. From January through next December, we want to worship fully. We want to spend less. We want to give more. And we want to love all. It ought to be a lifestyle and not a season. Let's close in prayer. Our Father, your son came 2,000 years ago to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And Father, he comes again today to live in my life, to live in the life of the men and the women who sit in these pews, so that by his presence in us, he can be known to others. Father, I trust that we will take your son in our life into close proximity and by personal touch and let others see Jesus. Father, I pray that tonight will be a grand night for families all across this country, all around this world. Father, Bethlehem was a troubled place 2,000 years ago, and I understand Bethlehem is a troubled place again today. And I understand deaths and murders have transpired today in protest of events going on. Father, your love it needs to reach around the world. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas. God bless you. I would love to see you before next year.